What do you do when a high-quality medical device stock hits a wee bit of a speed bump? Consider the case of Dexcom, DXCM, a company that makes the most popular continuous glucose monitoring system that's for people with type 1 diabetes. I've been a fan of Dexcom for years because the company has transformed the way diabetes patients check their blood sugar levels instead of pricking your finger a zillion times a day. Dexcom gives you a sensor that you can stick on your skin pretty much anywhere, and it constantly transmits your blood sugar levels to a wireless receiver. And while they do have some competition from the likes of Medtronic, Dexcom's management has been adamant they're not losing market share. And in fact, there's more than enough room for both, given how many people still use the finger prick method of glucose monitoring. Now, if you listen to me on this one, you've got some terrific gains. Stock is up 39% since the last time we spoke to the CEO just five months ago, not to mention rallying over 700% over the past five years. And yes, we've been recommending Dexcom for that long. However, Tuesday night, the company reported a wider than expected earnings loss, even as the revenues came in higher than expected, which is what we care about, a 47% year over year. Guidance was basically in line with what Wall Street was looking for. Still, that was enough to send the stock down a couple of bucks, even though it came uh, rallied back very nicely today. There are lots of reasons to buy Dexcom into any fleeting weakness, though. For example, two weeks ago, an FDA panel voted in favor of approving Dexcom's monitoring system for what's known as non-adjunctive use. In layman's terms, that means if the FDA follows through with the panel's recommendation, then it it opens the door for Medicare and Medicaid to start covering Dexcom's product. Right now, you may have been using their system for years, but once you turn 65, become eligible for Medicare, the government won't pay for it. So this could be a very, very big deal. That's why we need to check in with Kevin Sayer. He's the CEO of Dexcom. Hear more about the quarter and how the company's doing. Mr. Sayer, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you. Good to see you. How have you been? Have a seat, Kevin. Hey, I went on and on about the FDA thing only because I know it's just a panel, but because it it seems to be the biggest market out there. And if the panel recommendation gets approved by the FDA, it could be very very big for you. It could be very big. This is really the first medical device ever approved for making insulin dosing decisions if this follows through. And this has been an effort that's gone on for 24 months as we've worked very closely with the FDA to get this labeling. And the panel was just an amazing experience for all of us. Well, it, they were, there were three different subsets of things that they voted for. They all went for you pretty big. They did, eight to two, nine to one, and eight to two. Safety, uh, effectiveness, and do the benefits outweigh the, outweigh the risks. And we were positive on all three by a uh, long ways. And I, I know because you did a comms call, that's why I'm stressing you, because I don't think the quarter, frankly, yeah. was nearly as important as the quarter was great. But uh, quarter yeah. was great, but, but the panel was the, amazing. Right, and I, I just want people to understand that right now there have been people who have been using your device for years, and suddenly they would have to revert to pricking their finger well, because of the way the healthcare system works. So the way our device is labeled today, when you make an insulin dosing decision, you're supposed to confirm with a finger stick. Right. But the reality of practice is, Patients don't. The FDA was aware of this. The FDA is comfortable with the performance, accuracy, and consistency of the device. And they said, let's change this. Let's make it so you can train people to make insulin dosing decisions and take better care of themselves. Um, well, uh, uh, following your company for years, I, I would contend, and I think you can contend, but you guys are very conservative. It, it's better method in terms of the likelihood of finding out things. Oh, it's much better. One of the, the people who spoke at the panel meeting liked it to flying an airplane without a dashboard. But you get like a little display every now and then says, hey, you're going in this direction. With our system, you get arrows, trends, alerts, alarms. I think it's much better. Okay, now, uh, this was the first time on the call that I I heard people really just directly talk about Medtronic, the artificial pancreas that could be on the market in 2017. And I know the market is certainly big enough to handle both. But uh, I felt for the first time, geez, maybe Medtronic's kind of the sleeping giant that's woken up here. They are a giant. I don't think they've ever been asleep. Okay, Uh, fair enough. uh, our company has been built on, uh, on the glucose measurement uh, product that we have, our continuous glucose monitor. When they last their, launched their last system several years ago, we've done nothing but pick up market share points since then. I think this new system may be good, but we're comfortable with, with, with our performance, with our connectivity. We have several pump partners who are developing similar systems. So we'll have competitive offerings with a number of other companies out there with this. We're not. We're not okay. afraid. There's been enough for both of us. Uh, there have been constant iterations. Uh, I think your policy about what to do for older generations should be talked about. Well, for right now, uh, with our older generation product. Yeah, well, you know, the opportunity to upgrade. Right oh, here. the opportunity to upgrade. We've made some very good decisions with respect to the upgrading of our, of our product. We took the transmitter life down to three days, for example. So when we have a new technology, a patient's only 90 days away from the new system. On top of that, by going to the phone, and using mobile uh, platforms, you can get new technology overnight. 
So when we have a new app, you get a little note the next day, it's time to upgrade. Okay. Now, the uh, Google Life Sciences Partnership, I know that's difficult to talk about in, in specific detail. Just tell me how that's going, because it's one of only a few that they've identified that they really want to work with. And just give the, con the concept to people, because obviously they don't pick everybody. They didn't pick you out phone book. You know, our company is one of the few companies where you're, you are merging mobile platforms with serious healthcare. And with respect to mobile platforms and electronics and connectivity and data analytics, there's nobody better than Google. Right. And so as we right. looked at this, we're taking their strengths, whereby they can miniaturize our technology, make it more cost effective, help us do analyze the data better, and we focus on those things we do very well in, in glucose sensors. We are on track with our work with them. They're very aggressive. It's been really fun. They push us very hard. Are you out there? Are they at your place? Uh, we're, we're back and forth all the time. Last trip, I went up to Mountain View. So, uh, okay, the big thinkers? Very big thinkers. Long term. Very big long term thinkers that have pushed us in different directions. And if you can just for a second uh, just go over the reimbursement policy, the way that the system does work, because I think it, it does mystify people. The way the system works for us is we are covered by about 98, 99% of private insurance plans. And they cover us at very different levels, usually as durable medical equipment, so a patient has to pay something and, and, and they get their supplies right. in the system. There is paperwork and it does take a little bit of time, but patients are usually covered. One of our strategic efforts has been try to move this product more to a drugstore right. reimbursement and procurement effort. And, right, that's what I didn't and, understand. And why is isn't it, like if I go to Dwayne Reed or Walgreens, why isn't it there? It's a process. And but that's it, what you have to hope happens, right? That's right. And we do hope that happens. Right. And it's a question of us giving up price, coming up with better contractual re relationships. You know, we make history everywhere we go. We made history with this panel meeting. We made history with the accuracy and performance of our system. Right. Now we're going to make history in some commercial fronts, too. So we'll get this right. We'll get oh. it changed. And then the last, I, did, I know you didn't bring it this time. but I, mean, I didn't bring one this uh, time. But the, tell people again the size of what's inserted. Well, the sensor that's under your screen, right. your skin is about the size of a cat's eyelash or a cat. Which and yours can be put simple. anywhere. And it, it, it's labeled that's to important. be worn on the, it's labeled to be worn on the abdomen. Our patients do uh, put it uh, various places. Right. Okay. I just want to be sure that everyone knows that there's a big mode here, that not everybody's device is created equal. No, they're not created All equal. Right. Ours is definitely the best. All right. Well, we're sticking with you guys. That's Kevin Sayer, President and CEO of Dexcom, DXCM. May have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.